I've driven this car back when it launched in Portugal and I've also driven it when it first arrived in Malaysia in the guise of a 730LI, okay? The difference now is that the 40LE comes with laser lights. Laser. Look at that. The, the versions in, in, in Europe, they have like uh, some blue hints on the grille, which is not present here. Overall, from the exterior, right, it's pretty hard to distinguish this car from the 730LI that it replaces in Malaysia. Now, you can see the E-Drive batch here to show that it is the uh, plug-in hybrid version. And over here as well, that's, the, uh, that's where we charged the car. Okay, and then that's the eye performance batch, and that's the air breathers, which is prevalent in all the modern BMWs now. Is it has become a design language by itself, together with the Hofmeister King. Okay, this is the only BMW where the Hofmeister King, this chrome bar here, runs all the way as a one piece item. Uh, pretty delicate, and then this part here I really like. Look at this. Most side mirror, their base are plastics, right? This one is in the setting chrome material coming out here. Very nice. Even though this car does not have an X-Drive badge, this is actually four-wheel drive. It might not seem so from the exterior because of its balanced proportions and all that, but this car is larger, longer than the S-Class. Carbon core, what's that? From here, the A to C pillar, okay, the main pillar, the housing, they have a really strong carbon, something that is this thick and then it spans all the way, okay? And that strength massively strengthens the car. There are various portions where this is being liberally used in the car, so it is also the first uh, production car to have this kind of mixture. Overall, the exterior is very reserved. It's sporty proportions. A lot of people like it. The more they look at it, the more they like it. There's a chrome bar that spans across the rear. Look at that. And then the uh, stylized tips for the exhaust. Again, going to repeat this. A lot of people say, hey, those are fake exhausts. Um, I am a strong supporter of so-called fake exhausts. Why? First of all, they look good. Secondly, if someone lightly bump your rear bumper, you won't end up with a bent exhaust. Let's go inside here. A lot of people say the S-Class interior is prettier. I have to agree with that from a design standpoint, but I kind of think this might last longer. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, okay? This is more reserved, but there are a lot of elements inside here that adds to the sense of occasion, okay? The mixture of different materials. All these inside here are wrapped in leather. All these as well, very high quality plastics. And then here, all these are fantastic touch points. This wood paneling looks brilliant. It looks beautiful, okay? These are Harman Kardon speakers. Of course, in the overseas market, you can actually spec, um, is it Bang & Olufsen? I'm not sure, or Bowers & Wilkins. I think it's Bowers & Wilkins. A very sporty steering wheel okay and this is the one that you get in the um, 5 series as well so like all new BMW steering wheels not only they are thick but they are padded as well so it's very nice to grip very comfortable to the grip okay and they look good all these uh, aluminum panels they look really good they make the car look great yep the buttons as well all these uh, metallized or satin chrome and they feel good to the touch everywhere. I especially like this part where, you know, most cars, they just end abruptly. This one just sort of flows in here. Uh, it is repeated over this side as well. And what's amazing is that on the curvature or the chamfer of this panel houses the start-stop button. So it's not on a flat surface, you know. It's slightly bent, slightly organic, and then it looks really good, especially with these patterns in the, the wood patterns inside. And it starts silent because this is a plug-in hybrid, okay? Now, I like BMWs. Um, I mean, in, in certain ways, right, it actually, they limit themselves when they put this metal strip over here. This strip is actually a metal that is housed on top of the LCD, okay? So that sort of limits them from having a very dynamic 
uh, changing of the uh, visuals and all that because the metal bars will sort of limit their usage okay but it gives a sense of depth and there's a lot of this kind of um, mechanical plus electronic or LCD or digital kind of uh, combination going on in this cabin I'll show you a few examples look at this uh, temperature okay not only you can control over here but you can actually do it over here see even it shows that warm cold as I run my fingers across it doesn't look like it at first you see I l the fact that I like that is touch sensitive but it is well hidden inside a lot of components in this car so it might not look like it's digital but actually it is so I like I like the fact that they they kind of studied and do this thing that so it doesn't look so intimidating for people who imagine you put a 65 year old or 58 year old person into a Tesla now they've driven 7 series or S class all this while right everything you know very straightforward suddenly you put them into a Tesla right they feel like oh my god I have no idea how to operate this this is intimidating so BMW completely removed that because everything still looks physical it's just that they sort of interact with you in the way that is intuitive even the uh, radio control buttons look at this one two three four five six seven very straightforward right and then you get to press them you see you can press them but as you run your fingers across as i run my fingers across look at the top part it corresponds with my thing with my finger so what that means is that you can actually customize to assign something to these and then you can press them as you run your fingers across very very clever even this one this small little panel here look at that it's actually an LCD display there but then there's surfacing there's physical indentations that I get to touch and then as I touch them they light up look at that see that this light lights up and look at the text look at this text huh? I'm gonna turn this now it's gonna enlarge slightly see that yeah, there are a lot of all these little, little things going on in the cabin. Now, I'll try and move my hand nearer to the iDrive screen because it's touchscreen now. See that? You see it enlarging? That's quite interesting. But... See that? Ah! Does it help? It definitely do because I have a BMW and I have my volume knob here. It has always been there. And every time I operate it, my, 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 my eye need to glance a while, okay? A quick glance is all it takes, but then it's a quick glance anyway. The panoramic roof, okay? The panoramic roof, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see it. Can you see the little dots going on on the panoramic roof? That actually are LED little stuffs that kind of let the light glow over the uh, panoramic roof it is beautiful at night okay it makes it look really really beautiful now coming over here this is classic BMW it's split open there's a remote control for the rear that is a Qi charger but the Qi charger has a holder so you can it can sort of hold your phone there so you make sure it's, it charges uh, USB port just one and then a 12 volt okay all these surface leather wrap completely leather wrap and I love this electronic shifter BMW has revolutionized the industry and then everybody is following them with an electronic shifter now certain cars remove the shifter yeah it's perfectly okay but in terms of uh, entering the car there are a few things right that our eyes automatically um, check out or our focal point rests on those items okay First of all is the steering wheel. The second thing is this. Yes, that's why Volvo went to great lengths to uh, have a crystal gear knob, you know. Of course, Mercedes got it right. A single stock over here is all it takes to operate the car. Push up for reverse, push down for drive, press for P, that's it. But you can't make something like that over, over there, which is hidden behind the main thing and stylize it it's, that's pretty difficult but this guy here takes center stage in the center console okay and if it looks good your car looks better 
All right, let's come to the rear. That's the sun protection. I'm gonna open all. Yeah, man. So, can remove this. See that? Let me let me put it back, and then you see how it operates. Even this little thing here. Pretty awesome, right? So, yeah, you press eject, and then these two things gonna retract back, and this thing, this thing is pushed up. I really like the interface of this um, tablet here. Okay, you can control everything about the car. I can even have a massage if I wanted to. Choose the seat I want to do selections on. Uh, am I gonna adjust its position? No, I'm gonna have massage. Okay. I can have shoulder massage now and the intensity and then it will start massaging me all right I can even set uh, some vitality things which uh, including breathing and all that for bosses who are always busy on the go and all that all right and uh, what else the media and all that interior lighting now this thing here I really like this thing and uh, oh of course there are air vents on the B pillar right this is a uh, this is a flagship. This thing here, I love it, man. It looks beautiful. It makes the B pillar purposeful, right? I like the shape of it. I like how it glows up. Now, this is daytime now, but at night, it's a very satisfying, very beautiful glow. Okay, you pull a zipper down to put the Isofix mounts, and then put a chow on top to ruin your leather, your beautiful leather. Okay, now it's sort of quilted. And then this cushion here, this cushion is fantastic. It is super comfortable, super soft and plush, and it feels great putting your head there, okay? And these are, this is wood, real wood, and um, everything is very nice in here. A very nice place to be in. And then the seats massage, and it's a relaxing place to be, okay? So, yeah, man. BMW started a lot of new things in the past 10 years. So the iDrive, okay, the knob that controls your infotainment system, it is widely replicated across the industry now, okay? And even Kickstarter, everybody realized that they need to have a unified infotainment system with a beautiful uh, CI on its interface, the UI, the UX, everything must, must fit the brand. Okay, so you see this now in Audis, in Mercedes, in in uh, in Lexus, and Jaguar. You know everybody's doing it now, and a Porsche as well. And then BMW has the electronic shifter. You know the electronic shifter. Everybody is following that as well. And then I believe this guy here, this thing here, has started another uh, revolution for flagship cars because the new Audi A8 also has a tablet that can be removed and of course they added something in there uh, which doubles as their phone uh, their video is a bit funny you know the video shows the the, the boss who's sitting at the back put the phone inside the uh, the console and then Bluetooth hook up to the car and then when someone calls him he picks up with the tablet which is pretty pretty <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so easier to use your own phone, right? Just pick it up like that, right? Instead of using a tablet, going through the entire car and all that. But nevertheless, BMW has created something that I can assure you in the next S-Class, they will have it as well. But exciting newcomers are coming. There's the Audi A8 with a full touchscreen system. And then uh, they, they throw away the MMI knob, which is a big no-no for in, in my opinion. And then there's the brilliant new Lexus LS. From the videos, from the pictures that I watch, right, it's mind-boggling, okay? So this segment is getting interesting, but this guy, so far for now, still remains the athletic choice. It is a car where you get to be ferried around on weekdays, and then you carry your, you drive your family around on weekends. Oh, have I mentioned the horsepower? 332 and, I don't know, 500 or 540 newton meters of torque. We just checked just now. So it's pretty powerful, okay? Cheers. I love, I just love how this car drives, okay? And how it wafts along effortless, effortlessly. But then the difference between this 
and its competition, the S Class, is that the this drivetrain, this two liter turbo, right, is no joke because in the Merc you get the three point five V six direct injection V six, and yes, it's a big engine, but I will say this: if you have a small car, if not not small car, if you have a car that is lower down the range, right, a Camry or, or Accord. You can feel the difference between a 3.5 liter V6 engine versus a 2 liter turbocharged engine. Those little feedbacks from whether the engine trembling or whatever, all these things, right, actually you get to feel it. But when it comes to cars of this segment, right, when you're just so well insulated in the car, right, you can hardly tell a difference. Right, with, the, with the hybrid drivetrain, this car goes, man. This car performs like a 3 liter twin turbo. This car is rapid. And I guess by now BMW has sort of proven their plug-in hybrid technology, right? It is widely used in the 3 series, 330E, the X5, X40E. They just provide so much more go and then the flexibility of whether you want to burn dead dinosaurs or you just take it off your three pin plug at home your three point plug right you can park your car at home and then you charge it every day and then the next day you go off you can drive 30 40 kilometers not the way that i'm driving but you know the type of cruising uh speed normal speed not test drive speed okay and then the car won't kick in into won't kick the uh combustion engine alive the the car just won't burn petrol it will just run off the the, the electric mode Okay, and especially cars of this segment, imagine you have uh, drivers and all that, right? They can drive the car back down to the parking and then you have a uh, charger and then you can charge the car and then when you're ready, you just go off. So there is, a, there is a lot of charging time, a lot more than say a 330E, right? Because if you are, if, if you are an owner of a 330E, you won't be living the lifestyle of having a driver dropping you off and then going go back to the basement and charge the car. You won't have that, that, that thing in your day-to-day -day life. But a 7 Series, you will have that flexibility. And that means, right, you can barely use petrol at all the whole day if you want to. So that's the added flexibility. And uh, as a leader in all this technology, I think I've mentioned this many times in my videos, for the past 5-8 years, right, BMW has been at the forefront of pushing through new technologies for the car industry. Electronic shifters, iDrive integrated infotainment systems, and now gestures and all that. All these things, BMW has been very, very quick in introducing them. The uh, brake energy recuperation as well. They didn't invent it, but they were the first to really commercialize it, widely making it available across their cars. And actually, uh, if you ask, if you watch a lot of videos or comparison and all that, right, every time, for the past 10 years, every time they pitch a BMW or a Mercedes and an Audi together, the BMW always consumes the less fuel, the least fuel, okay? Yeah, efficient dynamics is not just a marketing talk, okay? Now, of course, they, they upgraded it to high performance. Now, of course, some might say, hey, it's a 7 Series. doesn't make sense to talk so much about driving, right? But if you have the chance to actually drive one, seated at the driver's cockpit here right you don't feel like you're in a very very vast car because everything is very near you it's unlike the uh, s-class where it's glamorous it's beautiful but you totally feel like a chauffeur okay because this guy they still want to make it a driver's car when you're seated here when the rear seats and all that is not within your vantage point right you kind of felt that this is still like a 3 Series. You see, everything is so near to you. Everything is so compact. In fact, it feels more compact than my 6 Series. My 6 Series feels further, wider, everything, you know. Yeah, that's how the 7 Series feels like. It feels like a small car, except the fact that you have exceptional soundproofing going on here in the car. And then, oh, I just like... Oh, seriously, guys, don't, don't ask me about fuel consumption. <laughs> because I like cars that are able to drive so well, handle so well, and basically just fun to drive. 
I can change it into sport mode, it will tighten up everything. And then, uh, yeah, this car is still a driver's car. Pretty much a driver's car. If I'm a driver, right, after I drop off my boss, I can enjoy my time in this car, man. I can really, really drive it. Fantastic, fantastic. Everything just feels great. Okay, the dashboard. Is it as good looking as the S-Class? No. The S-Class dashboard is just beautiful. That is a triumph in automotive interior design. I think that dashboard, right, looks prettier than anything that comes out from Bentley or Rolls-Royce, okay? But it belongs to the old school, classic, kind of Baroque kind of design language, okay? And this one is very avant-garde. This looks very modern, um, still very BMW, or you can say boring, you know? The aircon vents are here, the iDrive screen is here, the HVAC controls are here. Everything is still very, very BMW. This guy, even though the dash looks pretty much the same as a 3 or 5, but the material quality that they use, right, I can't really spot much. The S-Class, right, they have a leather wrap dashboard, which is pretty good looking, right? But right behind the leather wrap dashboard, towards the end of the uh, passenger side dashboard area, right, you can touch this quite some harsh plastics going on behind there, okay? But this guy, no. Of course, S-Class, they're updating the car now. I haven't driven the facelift yet. Uh, I'm not sure whether they've changed anything. So take that with a caveat, what I said, uh, or a pinch of salt, okay? In terms of power delivery, gear changes and all that, do I like it? Yes, it's fantastic. Is it super duper seamless when it comes to throttling the car and then not feeling the push? No. The S-Class, right, they did it in the way that they waft you along. This guy here, the characteristic of the ZF gearbox, the fast shifting and all that, right? At times when you drop the, 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 the pedal, especially in sport mode, okay? If it's in, then the car, you, you feel that thing. You feel the car doing that, okay? In comfort, way lesser. I'm gonna sit back there later and uh, have another extended video because this is, all, this is as much about the back seat as it is about driving it, yeah. Hi, this is the uh, the rear seat review of the uh, 7 Series, alright? Let me turn on the lights first, so that it's brighter, yeah. Now, first of all, bosses normally sit here, right? Because the it'll be a right-hand drive country, and then the drivers will be sitting there, and then the bosses will sit here. First of all, bosses at the back here, they do not wear seat belts, okay? None of them do. So, so if you are being politically correct, so I got no time for you, okay? Bosses don't wear seatbelts, okay? They just sit like that. Uh, it interferes with their coat and all that. The next thing will be, I have this iPad here. Let me show you again. Okay, it goes back in. Look at this metal part, okay? I press eject, it sort of retracts back and then something pushes it up. Yep, it's a complete show off. All right, so uh, there are a lot of stuffs to go through. Look at that, and um, sun protection. What the hell is sun protection, right? Um, look up here, and then look towards the back. All these blinds here. Look at all that. All right. Now, with a touch of a button, I'm gonna close all of them. Close all. See that? Everything. Okay? Now I open all. Yeah, baby. And this seat here. Look at this seat. Right? I don't have enough leg room. Don't worry. Now I can select the seats except the driver. No, I can't I can't sabo him when he's driving, right? But I can select which seat I want to do what. I can adjust the seat or I can go massage. Alright. So I'm gonna adjust this to the front now. Look at that. And uh, let's adjust the position. See the seat disappearing off? Yeah. It's like get out of my way. 
this boss, this this seat is is in my way of bossing around. So um, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Right. So yeah, man. <laughs> oh, full stretch. Cool stretch. What else can I do at the back here? I can change the radio stations, I can do whatever I like. The lightings, climate control, massage. I can massage myself, the climate control. Yeah, blah 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 blah. Everything. Now, what else is behind here? It's just a super comfortable place to be in, you know. It's quiet, relaxing. And then uh, if I need to pop a pimple, now, it's a bit far, la. it is a bit far. I mean, no, it's alright, because it's, it magnifies, so I get to, you know, oops, yeah, what else do I get? There's a screen here, it's more for media consumption, not so much for controlling the cars, okay? So I get to see the uh, car parameters, I can go like, hey, you're using too much fuel, Look at careful of your throttle, you know, or your GPS and all that. Okay, and then uh, down here is the um, climate control unit. Can you see that? Now, no bosses would actually bend over to twist a knob, right? So I get to control that using this as well. Okay, climate control, and I can adjust the air volume, the temperature, or lower it down. Okay, I can have the aircon blow through the underneath of that seat to cool my feet. So if you have Hong Kong feet, <laughs> oh well, anyway, yeah, there's a lot to play with. The seats adjustments are here, and these seats are super comfortable. These, I guess it's my age, I kind of appreciate brown leather seats now. Another thing, this. look at this part. Well, they actually engineered something to cover it. If not, when you drop this, right, there's a gaping hole there, right? Look at that. Look at how this thing slides up and down to cover it. Okay. Now, do I still get to recline? No. See, I can adjust the seat back. So if I want to read the paper, I can sit more upright and all that. Okay, and then, and then sit down. What about the headrest? See the headrest? I get to raise and lower it. Yep, and then here, I can raise it and lower it as well, as well as extend it. Yeah, baby. Ooh. Holy. That's more like it. Yep. That's the rear. Now, if it, if, if it gets dark at night, I'm not sure if you're able to see it through the camera. There are little dots there, right? These are actually LEDs and they can actually light up at night. Some form of ambient lighting. It makes the sky prettier. Okay, so if you're in a 7 Series, in a car like that, right? Your sky will be prettier. And I really love these, man. They are super comfortable. So uh, we were at the uh, the launch of the Honda City just now. The bosses of Honda, all of them were swarming around this car because because of their job, right? They don't get to they get to benchmark against Toyotas, Nissan, Mazdas, and all that. But they seldom check out the latest stuffs from you know Germany and all that. They were ooing and ahhing, and, and we're happy to show them that. And then we try to tell them. Do something like that for the Honda Accord. So if one day you see Honda Accord coming with these type of pillows, right? Remember, it came from us, Bobby and Keegan. Really, it came from us. If one day Honda Accords have these, because it is just splendid behind here. It's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Yep. I guess that's my rear seat review. Uh, Thank you, Keegan, for driving me around. You know what, what I'm going to do next? The next thing that I'm going to do is stand by to be the driver for him to take photos. Yeah. <laughs>
he's gonna tell me like Bobby drive faster and all that all right so cars like that um, it's just splendid so work hard people study hard and work hard and yeah it's nice cheers um, every surface here is covered in leather everything is just leather I'm I'm touching the inside of a cow <laughs> lots of it even the headliner man the headliner is fantastic beautiful qualities this uh, handlebar here on top is wood and uh, maybe I take you guys up for a closer okay Keegan trying to practice his shopper skill I can I can sense that <laughs> look at that part these are wood very good looking wood even the back here Look at that, you barely touch this, right? It's Alcantara. <laughs> yeah, man. The insides of this, the pocket here, no, it's not plastic. It is leather. It's wrapped in leather. The door, the door bins and all, is all in leather. Everything. Everything is in leather. And these are just beautiful to touch, okay? What is this? Open it up. Nothing much, covering in felt, pretty alright. Yeah, it's a very nice place to be in. The 7 series, right, has a totally different design idiom compared to the S-Class, right? From Keegan's perspective now, right, from what he sees, the things around him, there's little difference compared to a, a more personal driving car, like a 3 series or 5 series. Everything is within reach, it is still very sporty very BMW like okay but the moment he turned his head around he will realize that he's driving a limousine because this car handles yeah so if you're a boss Monday to Friday someone is ferrying you around on the weekends you can enjoy the car and ferry your family around okay yeah I guess that's about it cheers subscribe why you don't subscribe Please, please subscribe. <laughs> Bye.